Hi, and welcome to the brand new episode of Home Assistant running on Synology in Docker. Today, we are going to install CDR VS Code. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we continue with installation, I would just like to stress a couple of potential problems with this installation so that you are aware of them before you start installing them. First of all, unfortunately, I still was not able to add VS Code as iframe in a Home Assistant in my setup. We will try to add it here, but I cannot guarantee that it will work. Now let's look at what VS Code is. VS Code is an editor and it allows you to edit your configuration files in much easier, simpler to browse and edit. If we look at how we edit our files now, we do it usually by going into the configurator. And there we have our files listed. We have to select what file we want to edit, for example, automations. And then we go there and start typing something. Configurator has some simple uh, logic and function checks, but they are not 100% correct. And you're also unable to pull data from Home Assistant inside Configurator. So, for example, if you want to add this sensor, you really would need to know the name of the sensor to pull from the Home Assistant. The other option, what we have for editing our files, is going into the Synology using File Station and then opening our configuration files in the text editor. Also, very simple to use, but there is absolutely no error correction or verification that we are using correct or incorrect. Uh, entities and commands. So what is the, the biggest difference between the configurator and a text editor inside Synology with the VS Code? Let's look at one example. Uh, we want to edit our configuration and then if we want to add a new entity we would just start typing light and then we can select or if light is not listed Add first letter and we will be able to pull from the helper names of our entities. Same goes for example for the sensors. As you can see, editing, typing and verifying configuration is much, much more simpler than in both configurator and also much simpler than Synology one. Let's proceed with installation. First thing that we have to do is we have to open Putty. Let's connect to our server. Let's log in. And now we will have to create a couple of folders. Unfortunately, as I've written on my Twitter, setup is not as simple as it is in HASIO but we can manage to do almost all HSIO can do with this configuration. Let's create first folder. So we need to create folder where our permanent files for the Docker image will be located. So mkdir volume one docker vs code. And let's press enter. Next thing that we need to do is we need to create additional folder and let's call this folder temp T -A -T -E -M -P. This is the folder where we will be installing all our extensions before we install them. This is the folder where we will download extensions from the uh, Microsoft Marketplace and store them inside this folder. Let's clear this. And now let's start typing the command for the docker download. So this will be sudo docker run. Once again, we want to start in a terminal detached mode. Since we already have some docker containers running, 
you have to be careful now what port are you using and what port is already occupied. For example, if you have Facebox, Docker container for the face recognition, you will not be able to use nethost command. Instead, you will have to specify port command. In my case, I have removed Facebox container from this Synology setup, so I will be using nethost. Net equals host. As I said, if you have Facebox running, you should type P8888, for example, as external port and 8080 as internal port. This way, this Docker image would use internal IP network and internally it would be using port 8080. But to you and the rest of the network, it would be visible on the port 8888. Let's remove this. since we do not have Facebooks running and let's type net equals host. Next, we want to give the name to this Docker container and we will call it VS Code. We have to define user. Unfortunately, I tested it with various users, with standard user, Docker user, whatever, and the only user that was able to run this was user 1000 from the group 1000. For example, if you type ID inside your terminal, you would get for your user ID something like 1026 and the group would be 100. But for this Docker image, unfortunately, this is not working. Next, we want to define environment variable. There are two ways to authenticate user inside this uh, Docker image. One is to define environment variable with passwords and type in your password. This is what we will be using. The second option is to leave out this environment variable and to just continue typing the rest of the command without it. And the first time the container starts inside the log file, you will get your password. This password is recreated every time you remove and reinstall your Docker container. But we will be using password. And here, please type some secure password with a combination of letters and numbers. As this is a test setup, I will be typing just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have to map folders. So first folder that we will be mapping is folder we just created. So it's volume one docker vs code and it will be mapped with the internal folder home coder dot local share code server so this is the name of the internal folder next volume we need to map is the folder where we are keeping our configuration files for the home assistant as we want this to be opened automatically and we want VS Code to have access to our Home Assistant configuration files. So let's type volume one, docker. All my Home Assistant configuration files are held in folder home-assistant. And we need to now map it with the internal folder and the internal folder will be home coder project. And this is it from the configuration. We just now have to specify what image we want to download. So it will be coder, com, code, server, version 2. And this is it. If everything is typed in correctly, we will now be able to download this image and install it. Let's try and press enter. This looks okay. The image is now downloaded and installed. Let's go to Portainer and check if everything is working as it should. Let's go to Containers. And as you can see, we have VS Code stopped. The problem is that we do not have permission for our setup to write files. What we should do, we should 
play a bit with the permissions. Let's go back to the terminal. Verify that you are inside volume one Docker folder. You should be able to see VS Code here. Let's type command that will hopefully solve our issue with the permission. So it's sudo chmod 777 we're giving read write and execute for all the groups name of the folder is vs code and we want to run this recursively meaning we want all the files and folders inside vs code to uh, use the same the same setting enter let's go into the pertainer and let's press start let's check logs and pertainer is up and running let's go back to the terminal just to check something inside terminal let's go to the vs code folder and if everything is correct we only created one folder called temp but there should be some other folders also yes they are next thing that we need to do is we need to open browser on the ip address of our synology and with the port 8080 unless you used uh, port mapping and chose some other port let's refresh this page and this is our login screen you do not have to type in username you just have to type the password that you provided during the configuration for me this is one two three four five six seven eight and let's press enter next thing that we want to do is we want to open our home assistant configuration folder so let's go to open folder and if you remember from the command line we selected that project will be folder where we'll be keeping our home assistant files so select project and press ok as you can see all our all my configuration files are here let's try to open something and it's working but as you can see at this point if you would for example go to automations if we would try to add additional entity we will not be able to do it because at this point we still do not have extensions and what's the problem with that is there are extensions for Home Assistant and various others, uh, various others extensions such as icons, YAML checker, etc. But if we go to extensions marketplace, type home, we will not be seeing them here. That's why we still have a couple of more steps to do. It's really not that much work, but it has a lot of steps. We have to go through the list of all the extensions we have to install here but we cannot find it in the internal marketplace we have to visit each and every page so for example one of the components that needs to be installed is home assistant config helper from ks scholart and you have to press download and do this for the every component on the list the list will be down in description so this is first log file highlighter second third fourth fifth sixth and seventh extension now that you have downloaded all these seven extensions, you have to copy them inside Synology. Let's go inside the Synology. And in Synology, let's open File Station. Let's open VS Code. And let's open Temp folder that we created previously. And we need to copy files from our PC to the folder all seven files are copied last thing well not last thing but almost last thing let's go back to the VS code 
and in VS Code we have to add each and every component. So let's press here three dots, install from VSIX, let's go up one folder, up one folder, up one folder, temp and select. First of all, let's select email last, let's reload. Next, local share code server temp, ESP home, reload. And we have to repeat this for each of the seven components. When you come to the Home Assistant Config Helper, you will have to go to Settings. Let's go to Extensions, Home Assistant. And here you have to type the URL for the Home Assistant. So for me it's really HTTP 192.168.1.201. Here, and you have to add the port number, so 8123. We will ignore Certificate. And next thing that we have to do is we have to get long-lived access token. For that we have to go to Home Assistant. In Home Assistant select your name or initial. Go to the bottom of the page and create new token. Let's call it VS Code. Okay. And let's copy. Okay. Please make sure that you copy because if you do not copy it, you will, you will not be able to retrieve it. You would have to create new one. Let's go back to VS Code. And after you have copied your long-lived access token, just paste it here. Okay. This should be it. So, so far we have installed three extensions. ESP Home. I'm having a problem here with ESP Home since ESP Home is deactivated on this instance, on this installation. We have Home Assistant Config Helper. This will allow us to pull all the data for all the entities, sensors, devices, whatever we have in our Home Assistant. Log File Helper. It allows you to visually better, better track your uh, data inside the log files. Let's add fourth extension. My recommendation is that after each and every extension installation, you reload. Okay, so now we have material design icons. It will help us pull all those icons that we use throughout the Home Assistant. Let's add fifth. Okay, this will help you track the indentation of the variables inside uh, YAML files. I will show you in a, in a second. Let us just finish this. Let's load the sixth extension. This one does checking of the YAML format. And let's add last one. This enables icons for the Visual Studio Code. Let's press activate. And you will see what we did now. So at this point, all the extensions are installed. As you can see, this one is the ident rainbow, makes indentation easier to read. You can visually here track if everything is indented as it should be or not. But if we, for example, try to add something, for example, let's try adding here from, it will say that we do not have enough privileges to save it. So let's go back to the terminal. 
inside putty let's go one folder up and now once again let's type the same command we used previously this is sudo change mode 777 for folder home assistant and make this recursive enter let's type our password and hopefully this will fix problem with the permissions let's go back to the VS code let's type let's press retry and our configuration file is saved okay let's delete this we don't need this one save let's try browsing our files let's for example see i do not have that many devices here most of my devices are connected to the uh, zigbee on my home setup but i will try to show you what is the possibility and what is the advantage of using home assistant integration with vs code so for example let's say that those here are sensor entities or light entities if you want to add new entity for example sensor entity you would just start typing s e n and you would be presented with the list of other uh, sensors that you have so for example you would only need to press enter here and uh, pull the correct entity name is this worth doing in my personal opinion yes then there are a couple of reasons first reason is it's much easier to visually see and edit configuration files here than it is in the Synology YAML and also it is visually better than a configurator second thing that this docker container has that the configurator doesn't have is the possibility to use password so it gives you a little bit more security in terms of protecting your configuration files and third of all i think that those additional those additional extensions you can install and there are a lot more you can check the windows marketplace for them or visual studio marketplace for them they will enable you to get even more out of your configuration files or more in, in terms of editing them so yeah i think that this definitely is better solution than using text editor in Synology or configurator let's try and do one last step here and this is adding it in our configuration in um, iframe panel for that let's go to configuration we are already in configuration file and here we can add new uh, iframe panel well let's call it vs code title will be vs code url is http 192.168.1201 with the port 8080 don't forget to change this port to 8888 if you for example already use 8080 for facebox and the last thing is icon and now you can see a benefit of the icon component so let's go to extensions let's go to material design icons and as you can see it is pulling all the data from the uh, material design icon website and enabling you to see them and insert them in your code so let's go back to configuration and type mdi and here you can see all the mdi icons we want for this for example bug let's see if there is bug there is one thing you have to do you have to change from the uh, 
dash to con and this should be it this is already saved so let's try restarting home assistant let's go back to home assistant let's go to configuration server control check configuration and let's restart our server okay our server is back online let's see if vs code is working hopefully and it is let's go here and you can see that we have home assistant icons now here and everything is inside our home assistant it is up to you now you can of course choose not to install VS Code because it has a bit more steps. If I would have to choose, I would definitely choose this way of editing my configuration files instead of this one. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Home Assistant running on Synology in Docker. I hope you find this VS Code installation useful. I hope that you will use it. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, or you have idea how to improve this or any other Docker container, please leave a comment down below in a comment section. Of course, if you have any kind of idea on any future video for the Home Assistant series, please drop me a line down below. Thank you once again for watching this video. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.